assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to dr umi lectures in our previous session we studied the stages of erythropoiesis how from the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells clonal forming unit erythrocyte and then pro erythroblasts are produced which pass through successive stages to give rise mature red blood cells as you know the total mass of red blood cells is maintained within narrow limits so that the oxygen carrying capacity of our blood remains constant this fine regulation of red blood cell production is important so that their count do not increase or decrease in case of decrease of red blood cells as happens in anemia the oxygen carrying capacity of our blood will decrease and in case of increase in number of red blood cells as happens in polycythemia the blood viscosity will increase and the blood will become thick and it may impede the flow of blood although there are several important factors that regulate red blood cell production however the most important mechanism and very well studied is erythropoietin hormone that regulates erythropoiesis now let's talk about the stimuli for erythropoietin production the most important stimulus for erythropoietin secretion is hypoxia low oxygenation of tissues low oxygenation of tissues can be seen in different conditions for example in anemia which may be because of uh, increased breakdown as happened in sickle cell disease or in thalassemia or it may be because of uh, nutritional deficiencies as happens in case of iron de deficiency or b12 deficiency folic acid deficiency and also when there is a low blood volume for example in case of hemorrhage and when there is less blood flow to the tissues as may happen in case of uh, cardiac failure and when there is pulmonary disease for example emphysema that causes uh, poor oxygenation or less oxygen diffusion through the respiratory membrane or when we are at high altitude because there is less oxygen available in the environment and that low pressure of oxygen in the environment will decrease the diffusion of gases in our alveoli so all these factors whether there is less oxygen in the environment or there is poor exchange of gases in our lungs if there is some issue with the pulmonary respiratory membrane like in emphysema or if the pumping action of heart is poor for example in congestive cardiac failure or the oxygen carrying vehicle which is hemoglobin if that is deficient or when the blood is lost so in all of these cases when there will be less oxygen given to the tissue that poor oxygenation it will be detected by some organs especially the kidneys and liver and they will cause the production of erythropoietin hormone 90% of all the erythropoietin that is produced in our body comes from kidneys and 10% of erythropoietin comes from liver here it is very important to note that it is not the concentration of red blood cells in our blood that regulates the production of new red blood cells rather it is the tissue oxygenation level that controls the production of red blood cells so whenever our oxygen carrying capacity of blood is decreased in relation to the demand of oxygen by the body that will cause increased production of red blood cells even if your hemoglobin content is normal even if your red blood cell count is already normal but whenever there is less oxygenation of the tissues when there is less oxygen given to the tissues i will give you an example for example if a person has normal hemoglobin content normal red blood cell count but if the person is having uh, poor pumping by the heart or if the person is having some lung disease like emphysema so in such cases there will be less oxygen being given to the tissues kidney will detect it there will be increased production of erythropoietin that will stimulate bone marrow to increase the red blood cell production so just to summarize the important factor that regulates red blood cell production is not the concentration of red blood cells in your blood it is the tissue oxygenation or oxygen carrying capacity of your blood in relation to the demand of oxygen by the body erythropoietin is a glycoprotein hormone which is produced mainly from kidneys and also from liver its molecular weight is 34000 erythropoietin hormone acts on the bone marrow to increase red blood cell production it has been observed that 
if erythropoietin hormone is absent in our body there will be very less red blood cell production but when there is normal nutritional levels in our body and also when there is uh, increased level of erythropoietin it will stimulate bone marrow to increase the red blood cell production so here we can say that it is not the hypoxia and not the low oxygen level which can directly stimulate the bone marrow to increase red blood cell production it is the erythropoietin hormone which can stimulate bone marrow directly and then increase the red blood cell production hypoxia is an important factor to cause the erythropoietin production hypoxia itself when erythropoietin level is low cannot stimulate the bone marrow to increase red blood cell production hypoxia is an important stimulus to increase erythropoietin production which then can stimulate bone marrow to increase red blood cell production so where this erythropoietin hormone is produced uh, uh, from kidney some important sites where this erythropoietin hormone is produced in kidney are fibroblast like interstitial cells around the tubular cells of the nephrons of kidney in the cortex and outer medulla and also from the peritubular capillaries and from the tubular cells of the nephrons as you know that the tubules of kidney especially the proximal convoluted tubule are very actively involved in transport of various electrolytes and other substances and in reabsorption and secretion process they need a lot of atp for active transport process so these are the cells which use uh, a lot of oxygen to produce atp and these cells they sense tissue oxygenation so whenever there is hypoxia there will be increase in erythropoietin production from the sites which we have already mentioned now what is the mechanism of erythropoietin production from the kidneys whenever there is hypoxia or low oxygenation level there is production of a factor called as hypoxia inducible factor 1 this is the transcription factor which stimulates or induces several hypoxia inducible genes and erythropoietin gene is one of them as this hypoxia inducible factor 1 is a transcription factor it binds to the hormone response element on the erythropoietin gene and then it increases the production of messenger rna for erythropoietin which is translated to cause the production of erythropoietin protein moreover epinephrine nor epinephrine and prostaglandins are some other factors which increase the production of erythropoietin hormone so if both the kidneys are removed in an animal experimentally or they become destroyed in a human being then there is no production of erythropoietin hormone in case of uh, deficiency of erythropoietin coming from kidney the only 10% erythropoietin which is coming from liver will not be sufficient to stimulate the bone marrow and cause enough production of red blood cells hence these people they have anemia and this kind of anemia is called as renal anemia so you can easily understand that a person who is having chronic renal failure will look pale because he is he is not having enough erythropoietin and that there will be less red blood cell production his hemoglobin level will be low now let's study what are the effects of erythropoietin hormone on bone marrow experimentally we have studied that if we place an animal in a hypoxic environment there will be increase in erythropoietin production or we if we give an injection of erythropoietin hormone to the animal so in both of these conditions when there is increase in erythropoietin in the body this erythropoietin hormone will stimulate the bone marrow the stem cells will move towards the pro erythroblast hence by division there will be increase in pro erythroblast formation and also there will be increase in differentiation of cells from pro erythroblast towards basophil erythroblast then polychromatophil erythroblast orthochromatic erythroblast and then reticulocyte and uh, mature red blood cells are produced after there is an increase in erythropoietin hormone production and then stimulation of bone marrow it takes about 5 days for new red blood cells to appear in your circulation so very interesting question you may be asked when you give one unit of blood to some recipient how much time it will take for your uh, blood to be restored so the answer is about 5 to 7 days so less than in less than a week your red blood cells they will be restored to normal and it is this is because of erythropoietin hormone which is produced after you donate blood that stimulates your bone marrow to increase the production of red blood cells and hence your red blood cell count and your hemoglobin level will come back to normal within one week so when more and more red blood cells enter from red bone marrow into our circulation then your oxygen carrying capacity will increase 
more oxygen will be delivered to the tissues and this will be a negative feedback mechanism for our kidneys and then kidneys will decrease the production of erythropoietin hormone so you can see here that this mechanism by which erythropoietin regulates your red blood cell production is a negative feedback mechanism and it very finely and tightly controls the red blood cell count in the absence of erythropoietin hormone even if hypoxia is there very less red blood cells will be produced from bone marrow however this erythropoietin hormone is a very powerful mechanism when all the other nutrients are enough in supply and there is increase in production of erythropoietin hormone this hormone can stimulate bone marrow to increase the production of red blood cells up to 10 times or even more than that now let's talk about synthetic erythropoietin hormone as researchers have identified the erythropoietin gene using the principles of biotechnology we can prepare this erythropoietin hormone in laboratory this industry earns in billions per year this synthetic erythropoietin hormone is used as a treatment in those who are having less red blood cell production for example in case of chronic renal failure when erythropoietin is hormone is not produced from the kidney or in those who are taking chemotherapy for their cancer treatment cancer chemotherapy interferes with those cells which are very rapidly dividing in our body so this does not only affect the cancer cells but also affects the hematopoietic cells which are also very rapidly dividing cells availability of the synthetic erythropoietin hormone has also decreased the need for donor blood up to 50 percent in some western hospitals what is done is that the surgical patient's own blood is collected several weeks before surgery and the patient is given erythropoietin hormone which stimulates red blood cell productions and the collected blood is given to the same patient intraoperatively or postoperatively in this way the need for donor's blood has been decreased up to 50 percent in some advanced hospitals now let's talk about blood doping blood doping is a technique which can temporarily increase the oxygen carrying capacity of blood and this can be used to gain competitive advantage the mechanism of doping is that for some athletes their blood up to one to four units are removed several weeks before competition blood plasma is reinfused in the same athlete but red blood cells are stored in the period between blood withdrawals there is increase in erythropoietin production in the body that will stimulate the bone marrow to increase red blood cell production so for the athlete the red blood cell count will come back to normal the stored red blood cells will be reinfused a few days before competition this results in increased aerobic metabolism and endurance and 5 to 15 percent increase in athletic performance and now because erythropoietin hormone is available in the market to increase the red blood cell production in the patients of chronic renal failure and in those cancer patients who are using chemotherapy so in the black market the same erythropoietin hormone has been used by some athletes like uh, marathoners swimmers and cyclists to increase the production of their red blood cells when erythropoietin increases red blood cell production it increases the oxygen carrying capacity and hence it also increases their athletic performance this doping either by using the blood transfusions or by synthetic erythropoietin hormone is banned in the world it's illegal and unethical because increase in athletic performance by doping will make the competition unfair and some deaths have also been observed after doping maybe because there is increase in red blood cell count and that increase in the blood viscosity and that may impede the flow of blood in our next lecture we will study diseases which occur due to increase in red blood cell production that is polycythemia and diseases due to decrease in red blood cell count which is called as anemia i hope you must have enjoyed this session thank you so much for watching this video see you next time with another video